off to the Laura Races on a dusty bush track approximately 100 miles northwest of Cooktown in the centre of the tip of the Cape York Peninsula. The last 50 miles is marked dry weather track only. And we push over the Great Dividing Range into the hinterland. Bridges are made from rough hewn logs placed end on end and the Palmer River is crossed. Here is the only petrol available for over a hundred miles. Sixty years ago the Palmer River goldfields ceased production and the town of 10,000 population is now reduced to one family only who operate the cafe and gas station, spending their time prospecting in the river between customers. Off again over the ranges and onto the flat, high plateau, on which there are five cattle stations, each over 500 square miles in area. Only 47 miles to Laura, and the road doesn't improve. And at Hell's Gate, the tow bar breaks away from the car, and makeshift repairs are made to try and tow the caravan by roping it to the bumper bar at the back of the car. All went well until we tried to cross the rough bed of the Laura River. The front of the caravan dug into the stones and the wheels of the car buried in the loose rocks. But fortunately, a jeep came to the rescue and towed us into the town of Laura. The town water supply pumped from the artesian basin into the picturesque holding pool as we swing over the Laura River Bridge and sail majestically down the main street with its galvanized iron pub, galvanized iron store and one galvanized iron house housing the police constable for the 27,000 square mile top of Australia. The station hands arrive for the big do. Each station property within 200 miles brings caravans and tents which are set up in the anthills about a mile outside the racetrack. Then all make for the Peninsula Hotel to greet old friends and start the good fellowship part of the meeting, which usually lasts for five days, one day to get there, two days for the race meeting, one day to sober up and return home on the last day. The fully equipped store also supplies the petrol, and even a taxation consultant for the duration of the race meeting. As all sit or lie on the veranda of the pub to get in the mood. The pub has enough freezer capacity for 4,000 stubbies. Each man seems to be accompanied by at least two dogs. The cold beer is always gone by 10 a.m. Soon the cr town is crowded as folk arrive mainly by jeep or Land Rover and clutter the front of the pub.
the cowboy outputter from Merida sets up his stall while the folk singer Buddy Williams prepares for the night show. But we've still got plenty of troubles with the broken tow bar. Then all is in readiness for the welder, who has now sobered up enough to make the repairs from a portable welding plant. It's over 90 in the shade, and the only trouble is that there's no shade, and this is in the middle of July. The welder leaves, then all is in readiness for the race meeting on the morrow. As the horses arrive, and the stop is made at the pub, before they're led into the enclosure at the track, A merry-go-round is set up for the kids, for this is a family affair, and nothing must disturb Dad's drinking time. The Aborigines are clean and well-dressed, and all stay together in groups about 300 yards away from the whites. The focal point of the meeting is the bar on a small hill behind the main grandstand. The Aboriginals coming down to buy ice creams and then returning to their own groups. We did not see one Aboriginal drinking at the bar. They all drank soft drinks and left the stubbies to the whites. The President's Cup for a prize of $200. But even this momentous event failed to drag many from the bar. turns to weigh in as the youngsters get stuck into the serious business of ice cream. The Aboriginals, even at the close of the day, were clean and proud of the station properties that they were representing. But by 3.30, most of the whites at the bar were badly the worse for wear. As stubby bottles are worthless in the far north, they are just heaved away as they're finished. And as the next meeting is a year away, nobody gives a darn about cleaning up the mess. race, the Laura Cup, with $500 as prize money, and the main event of the meet. It's a flag drop start. And they're on their way for the two-lap journey of the course. Fortunately, the camera was not required to decide the winner of the cup.
Our main impression of the meeting was the speck and span dressing of the Aboriginals in contrast to the whites. Dawn of the morning after. The cup ball in the tin shed had finished at 5 a.m. And the last of the musicians collect their instruments as dancers sleep under trucks or acquire, retire quietly to the refuge of the Peninsula Hotel for a few final rounds. But it's easier to sleep it off and leave Laura and the mess until next year.